and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you're joining us for worship today. Happy Pentecost. In the beautiful Pentecost window behind me, you can see the Holy Spirit descending upon the disciples in the form of a dove. We know that the Holy Spirit is with each one of us every time we come together to celebrate God's love, every time two or more are gathered in God's name. And so we rejoice that the Holy Spirit is with us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. to our holy God who loves us so much. Holy One, when Christ ascended into heaven to reign with you in power and glory, you sent the spirit of truth to guide us into the way, the truth, and the life of Christ. Let your spirit, our advocate, guide us still, preserving us from judgment, 
protecting us from sin and leading us into righteousness so that we may testify to the good news, fullness of life and joy for all through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. Hello, children, and welcome to the Children's Sermon. This is a very special day in the church's life. Today is the church's birthday. Happy birthday, church. Today, we have a couple of different ways that you can celebrate the church's birthday. One is by making a wind sock that catches the wind. The other is making a little kite and finally making a pinwheel. That's my favorite. And if you practice with the pin, you can really get it to spin well. All three of these are to remember that the Holy Spirit is with us all the time, just like the air we breathe is with us all the time. And sometimes the Holy Spirit is as quiet and still as a little whisper or the breath of someone who loves us on our cheek. But sometimes the Holy Spirit is wild and powerful, just like a stormy night. I hope that you enjoy making these little crafts, and I also hope that you can feel God's Spirit with you right now and always. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, thank you for being with us like a still little breeze on a warm summer day. And thank you for also being us, with us like a giant wind that shakes the trees and shakes us into action. Thank you for loving us all the time and being as close as the air that we breathe. Alleluia. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. In our baptism, God promises to be with us, to live in our hearts this and every day. And so knowing that we are a new creation in Christ and knowing that Christ's peace is for us every day, I hope that first of all, we feel Christ's peace and second, that we can think of ways to share it with others. We ask you today and every Sunday to think of a person or two that you can reach out to today or later this week to go ahead and connect with them in the name of Christ and to share that peace of Christ with them. The peace of Christ be with you and with your spirit. Amen.
Good morning. Welcome to Central Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you're joining us for our worship service today. On this special day, this is Pentecost, the day on which the church celebrates the coming of the Spirit. Now, I'm recording this in our cloister garden today, this beautiful space where we often will hold worship services during the nice weather. It's a little windy out here today, and so the camera shakes some, which is appropriate actually on Pentecost since the sound of a mighty rushing wind was part of what happened that Pentecost day when the Spirit came. So we have a little wind out here with us this day. We're also celebrating today our confirmation class, ninth graders who spent the whole year studying and working together. They are members now of Central Church and we wanna celebrate them in our worship service today. We plan to do a real celebration with them when we're back together again, but we do want to honor their accomplishment today. I also want to express special thanks to Mibs Wagner and her committee, our 150th anniversary committee, which has planned all sorts of events throughout this past two years to help us to celebrate the 150th anniversary of Central's founding. That happened on May 29th, 1870. And so that celebration in some ways is ending, although we plan to have a major celebration when we're back together again. We will be 150 years old all year long. And so hopefully before we turn 151, we'll be back together and able to celebrate with each other this milestone in the life of our congregation. I also want you to know that next Sunday, June 7th, during this time together, we will be taking a stab at celebrating the sacrament of communion. And we have communion kits uh, with the elements in them all sealed up. If you would like to pick up a kit, I'd ask that you please notify me at my church email address or call the church office and leave a message for me so that I can be sure to set up a kit for you to pick up sometime during the coming week. We will be celebrating in our broadcast next Sunday, June 7th, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, and you are invited to join us and hope that you can use one of our kits or provide your own elements. That really uh, completes uh, any announcements that I have. Again, we're glad that you're here to celebrate this day of Pentecost with us at Central Church and hope that you feel connected and a part of our community. By the way, we continue to plan to worship together every Sunday throughout this whole experience. And um, we, you will find us on Hometown Television, Facebook, and YouTube. So please look for us there and continue to look to our website for any updates on what it is that we are able to do as we move forward. God bless. I'm standing here in front of the beautiful Pentecost window at Central Presbyterian Church. Uh, the central panel of that window behind me is a visualization of the story of the first Pentecost. The two side panels are visualizations of other stories from the book of Acts, but that central panel is a visualization, a picture of a moment in the story of the first Pentecost. I'm going to read that story to you now. It comes to us in the book of Acts in chapter two. I'm beginning to read at the first verse. Listen and hear God's word. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, 
appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. May God bless to our understanding this reading of God's holy word, and to God's name be glory and praise. Amen. And you know, I'm supposed to read the story from Acts 2 about that first Pentecost today. That is that day, 50 days after Easter, 10 days after Jesus had ascended into heaven, the story of the Holy Spirit coming to fill Jesus' followers when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Just as Jesus had been promising would happen to them from the moment they started following Jesus, Jesus promised that they would one day be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and they had waited all that time for this to happen. And they had waited since Jesus had ascended. When Jesus, in that last visit with them, made the promise to them yet again that they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When is that going to happen? The disciples asked Jesus on that ascension day. And Jesus said, not very long. But how long are we going to have to wait? They asked Jesus. And Jesus said, that's not for you to know. And then, according to Acts, Jesus was lifted up and a cloud took him from their sight and they were left staring into the sky with their questions, with their wanderings, with their doubts. And yet, according to Acts, the amazing thing is that they did what Jesus told them to do. They went back to Jerusalem And they waited. They waited there until the time was right and the Holy Spirit came. And you know, this year on Pentecost, instead of talking about the Pentecost story, I'm drawn to the story about how they waited there for the time to be right. Because it's hard to wait All of us are discovering that during this time. It's hard to wait, especially when we don't know how long we're going to have to wait. I remember in a congregation I served when I was a much younger man, near the beginning of my ministry, there was this young man in that congregation who was very active in the life of that church. And I remember one Sunday talking to him after church was over, His young son was standing there pulling him by the hand, trying to say, come on, Dad, let's go home. And his dad looked at him and he said to him, you know, son, uh, just wait a minute. And his son replied, is this going to be one of those long minutes or one of those short minutes? (laughs) Which is a great question. How long are we going to have to wait? The experts tell us that we need to wait until it's safe for us to be together again. But when will it be safe for us to be together again? To go out and get a haircut, to see our family and friends, to gather again together as a church. How long are we going to have to wait? Is it going to be one of those long minutes or one of those short minutes? 
those early followers of Jesus, they waited, according to the book of Acts, for 10 days for the day of Pentecost to arrive. But when they started waiting, when they obeyed Jesus to go and wait, they didn't know how long it was going to take. They didn't know how long they were going to have to wait. And so how did they do it? How did they get through waiting? Because we all know how hard it is to wait, especially when we don't know how long we're going to have to wait. And I think the story in Acts chapter 1 gives us some ideas. In fact, I think there were three things that those early followers of Jesus did while they were waiting. First, they waited together. There is incredible power when we wait together. No one jumping ahead, but all of us waiting together. I know that during this time of the coronavirus, it seems that one of the really terrible things has been how it's made us all separate, how it's made us all feel like we're not connected to each other. And yet I want to suggest to you, there are so many ways in which we can be connected to each other, even while we wait through the coronavirus pandemic. There is, of course, all the technology that's at our disposal, which is amazing. But beyond the technology, there are simple things that we can do that connect us. I know of a woman in our church who has taken to having tea in her backyard with friends and neighbors. It's not something that she usually had done before this, but she is doing it now. And while it's not the same as her life was before, she seems to get some satisfaction, some real joy out of time spent in her backyard having tea with another person. And I think she must enjoy that because she's learned an important secret while we wait. She's learned the secret of how important it is to focus on what she has and not on what she used to have. And there are all sorts of ways that we can connect. I mean, during this service, we have tried to highlight the members of our confirmation class. And I think it would be wonderful this year, during this confirmation, if our congregation could kind of shower those, children, those kids and those families with cards and notes congratulating them, welcoming them to our church family. It's not the same way that we usually celebrate confirmation, but it still is a connection. In Acts 1, Jesus' followers waited together. But they didn't just wait together. According to the book of Acts, they waited in prayer. They were constantly praying, the book of Acts tells us. And that's the second thing they did. And you know, prayer is a funny thing. Because I find that when I pray, and I don't mean praying in some formalistic, ritualistic kind of format, but when I pray, that is when I set aside some time and some space in my life, which is easier to come by during quarantine, when I set aside that time and space and just let my thoughts go, I find that my thoughts lead me not so much to God, ironically, but they lead me to think of other people. And when I think of other people, it's kind of like a connection that happens. Sometimes, literally, because I'll pick up the phone and I'll give them a call, and we have a conversation with each other. Sometimes that's the first conversations we've had with each other in a very long time. They waited together, and they prayed. But that's not all that they did. The third thing that they did was that they 
got ready for when the waiting was over. In the case of those earliest followers of Jesus, what they did was that they chose a successor to Judas, the disciple, one of Jesus' first 12 disciples, who ended up committing suicide after he had betrayed Jesus. Those followers of Jesus who were waiting in Jerusalem for the day of Pentecost, one of the things they did to get ready for when the waiting would be over was they chose a successor to Judas, a man by the name of Matthias. Now, the ironic thing is, after they chose Matthias, and when Pentecost happened and their waiting was over, we don't ever really hear of Matthias again. Which should serve as a reminder to us. If we want to plan for when the waiting is over, we should be ready to have the experience that a lot of those plans are going to disappear. But you see, the point isn't the particulars of the plans. Now the point is the hope and the trust that stands behind the plans. The hope and the trust that we won't wait forever. Tony Campolo, he says that one of his favorite verses in the Bible is, it came to pass. Now it says it came to pass a lot in the Bible. And biblical scholars might object to Tony's interpretation of that verse, but what Tony reminds us of is that the Bible says no matter what it is that we're experiencing, no matter where we are in life, it didn't come to stay. It came to pass. And there will come a day when we no longer have to wait to be together again. There will come a day when the Holy Spirit will come upon us and we will be able to gather again with family and friends. We will be able to gather again safely in our churches and we will be able to be together in the ways that we're more accustomed to being together. This waiting, it didn't come to stay. It came to pass, and it will. But for right now, we need to wait. We need to wait together. We need to wait praying. And we need to wait planning for the day when the waiting will be over and the Holy Spirit will come to empower us to live in a world that has changed and that desperately needs to change. But for now, we wait. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. On this Pentecost Sunday, we are pleased to welcome members of our 2020 confirmation class into membership today. Each year, members of our class commit to spending a year in class learning about the service of the church, mission in the church, and the ways that we worship. In addition to spending time in class each month, they also work with a mentor to complete assignments and projects. Assignments like serving on session for an evening or teaching Sunday school or painting houses. We have been delighted to watch these young people grow and their connections to members of our congregation grow as well. We are deeply grateful for their mentors and we are so pleased to welcome the class of 2020 into Central Presbyterian Church. As part of their confirmation year, each confirmand completes a faith expression project. And I will be reading the names of our confirmands, telling you who their mentors are, and explaining about their projects. 
Our first confirmand is James Beecham. He's a freshman at Pingree High School. Jeff Huggins was his mentor. And this year, for his Faith Expression Project, he and Edouard Germa read to young children over Zoom. This was a special project during COVID-19 to help moms and dads get a little bit of a break while their young children got to read with a cool teenager. Ellie Blunden worked all year with Sally Snyder. The two of them had a wonderful time going to different faith communities and learning how to bake and doing all kinds of great service together. Um, Ellie has been a tutor at Elizabeth Port Tutorial all year long, and she decided to concentrate on that for her faith expression. Graham Buchanan has been working with Bill Evenson. Not only are these two neighbors and friends, they also did a great job of going out on the night run and also serving the church together. Uh, Graham decided to concentrate on bringing food to the needy during COVID-19 as his faith expression project. John Cho um, worked with Steve Peterson all year round. Uh, John Cho is a runner, and so for his faith expression, he and his mentor explored different faith practices that would enrich his running program and tried different ways of praying as part of their running practices. And for the mentor, Steve, it was during bicycling. Maddie Ducey was also an Elizabeth Port tutorial uh, tutor, and she worked with Jennifer Anderson all year long. The two of them had a wonderful time serving as deacons and being a part of the life of the church. Maddie is a second generation tutor in Elizabeth Port, meaning that her mom was also a tutor, and she chose to focus on Elizabeth Port tutorial for her faith expression as well. Edward Germa worked with Adam Gilbert this year. Edward and Adam had a great time uh, working on contemporary worship, going to faith communities together, and serving on Midnight Run. Edward also concentrated on reading to young children during COVID-19. For a number of our students, they had to change their project um, right as we were shutting down a lot of the kids were about to complete their projects or to start their projects and they just couldn't do it. So they had to do a different thing. Like so many of us, they had to adjust. Edouard was a student who did adjust and decided to, like I said, concentrate on helping young children in the community. Peter Horton worked with Scott Hendricks. They enjoyed going on Midnight Run and making uh, pancakes for our Family Promise guests. They had a lovely year together. Um, Peter is also a runner and is also explored spiritual practices that he could try while he was running. Emma Ramsey uh, worked with Beth Sharp this year. Emma had a wonderful time with Beth. Um, she also got to do confirmation with her cousin, Julia, which was really special. And she, uh, during this COVID-19, made special bracelets for people in hospitals to remind them to have hope and to know that people cared for them. So she made hope bracelets as her faith expression. Julia Ramsey uh, during worked with Beth Sharp as well and with her cousin, which was a really special thing to be able to be all together. Um, and together, they one of my favorite things is they got to interview some youth deacons who were a little bit older, which was really cool. Um, Julia also, um, during COVID-19, she's not usually a runner, but she ended up doing a lot of running instead of her regular practice. And so she really started to enjoy running and also explored spiritual practices related to running and found not only did, that she likes to run, but that these practices helped her to be a better runner. I'm so proud that Julia, Peter, and, and John were all able to explore a practice that they can use for the rest of their lives. Susie Sykes spent the year working with Lori Donahue. The two of them had a great time serving as youth deacons, um, spending time helping the homeless, and preparing sandwiches for Family Promise as, or at, for Midnight Run as part of our service at Central. Susie and Lori worked together on their faith expression. Ben Terrell spent the year working with Bob Hander, and Ben is loves mountain biking. And so for his faith expression project, he built a trail 
with some friends, which was an expression not only of his love of biking, but also his enjoyment of community. And during COVID-19, riding bikes through the woods on his mountain biking trail has been one of the ways that he feels close to God and close to his community. Um, finally, the last member of our confirmation class was Robert Welton. Robert Welton is a freshman at Summit High School. He worked with Ted Chow all year long. And one of the things that Robert enjoys most about his life in church is performing with the Crashing Giants. For his confirmation project, Robert changed the words of this little light of mine to this little life of mine symbolizing his dedication of the life of Christ that he has through Central Presbyterian Church. Um, we will be celebrating all of these uh, faith expressions and welcoming the children into worship um, when we can be back together again safely. Um, we'll have our regular confirmation breakfast and they'll get to present their faith expressions when we're all able to do it safely. And I think that you can see that not only are they full of spirit and good works, that they are also theologically curious and truly grounded in what it means to be a thoughtful, questioning, Presbyterian group of young people. I hope that you can join with me in welcoming them into service, whether that's through the youth deacons, whether it's as teachers, as mission trip members, as tutors. We are so grateful to have them as members of the church. We're so grateful for each of the mentors who spent time with them, and we're especially grateful for their teachers this year. Please join me in thanking Sally Snyder, who worked with all of the mentors, Kendall Hander, Steve Peterson, and Dave Bosgate, who taught them every week in class. Thank you so much for each one of you for supporting these young people as they have become active members here at Central Presbyterian Church. Welcome to the confirmation class of 2020. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come. Come to help us right now to learn what it means to wait. To wait together, to wait in prayer, and to wait getting ready for when the waiting will be over. Gracious God, we ask that you would help us to trust that the day is coming when the waiting will be over. And we will be empowered to live in a new world, in a world that has been changed by all of this, and in a world that needs to change. And gracious God, we ask that you would, in the meantime, give us the patience we need to wait. We know for some, this time of waiting is particularly bitter. They've suffered a loss of someone they love. They have suffered a loss of their job, their employment. They've suffered a loss of their own feelings of being in control of their lives. Gracious God, we ask for special comfort for those who find this waiting to be so bitter. And we know that there are those who struggle with real feelings of loneliness, of being abandoned. Gracious God, we ask that you would help us to find ways to reach out. And we pray that you would give to those who are feeling so alone the strength to reach out to a friend, to find somebody with whom they can connect. We pray this day, especially for our confirmation class. And we thank you for their decision to make a commitment as members of our congregation. And we welcome them here. And we ask that together we would continue 150 years of tradition here at Central Church, a commitment to be central to our community and in the world around us. And we give you thanks 
for their teachers, for their mentors, and for their parents, for all the people who have meant so much to them, who have shaped the kind of people they are, we give you thanks. We continue to pray for those who are sick. We continue to pray for health care workers and essential workers, people who make sure that the world around us continues to function. We ask that you would protect them and keep them in your care. Holy God, we pray that the waiting would not be too long. And we pray that one day soon it will be safe for us and for all to gather again, to embrace, and to hold each other with the support that now we give in other ways. Keep us connected connected to each other, connected to you. For gracious God, we pray these things in our waiting as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, we continue to be absolutely amazed by the generosity of our congregation and the consistency of the support of our members who continue to honor their pledges and go above and beyond their pledges, knowing that this waiting will one day end and we're going to need to stand strongly into that new uh, world in which we'll find ourselves one day soon. So our thanks to our members for your ongoing support. We know that others um, are, have found us uh, online and through Facebook and through YouTube, and we're really glad that you have. And if you'd like to support our ministry financially, we would love to receive a gift from you. You can make a gift in two ways. You can go online to our website and go down to the Give Plus tab and make a donation online following the instructions there, or you can mail us a donation to 70 Maple Street in Summit, New Jersey. Either way, we would be very appreciative of any gift that you would like to give to us during this time in appreciation for the ministry that you've received uh, from us over Facebook, YouTube, and on HTTV. We're really glad to be a part of your lives in this way, and we look forward to the day when the waiting will be over and maybe we'll actually get to see you here in our sanctuary. God bless.
This service of worship has ended. And we go from this place to serve God in all that we say, in all that we do, in all who we are. None of us knows what we will face this week. For some, there will be great joy and triumph, and for others, there will be sadness and defeat. But whatever it is that we face this week, we do not face it alone. But we face it all in the strength and the power of the Almighty God who is always near. And now, may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would overflow with hope. God bless you.